Now, this is Mr. Edge. Wanted to talk to you about that incident. Uh, just got home for dinner here. Yeah. Uh, tell me everything you know about it. I know my wife's described it to me, but I'd like to hear it, hear it from you exactly. Well, uh, the time this morning is about, uh, oh, it's about 6.50. We was coming home from, coming through Mount Vernon, and, uh, uh-huh. and I don't want you know where Lamont is, a little old place called Lamont down in Aranoc. Lamont. Not really sure of it. What well, do here? it's just about, uh, straight over from, uh, Meat Johnson's new plant down there. It's a little side tracker. Okay, so that's east of us. Yes. Okay. East Which way have you headed? Coming to... I was going east. Yeah. Going east. Yeah, okay. I was coming in with the train uh, coming into Evansville. Okay. And, uh, and the sun was just barely peeking over the treetops, and, uh... Okay, and the so, sun was coming up. And we, and we saw, I noticed a bright light up in the sky, because I was kind of noticing the sun over to the, the left of me, the right of me there, and, uh, that's I seen a, I seen a bright light that burned a... Coming out of the north, you know. And uh, was it low? Uh, no. Uh, it looked like it was tall high. I'll tell you about the size that it really looked like. Uh, was about the size of a basketball. Uh huh. But it was real bright. How would you compare it with the sun size? Uh, oh, it was, uh, it was uh, a lot smaller than the sun size. About how much? Oh, I'd say it looked like four or five times smaller than the sun size. Okay, about one fourth and one fifth. Yeah. Okay. And what color was it? Uh, it was, it was, uh, real bright, white looking. Okay. And, uh... Okay, continue on now. I won't interrupt you. So, uh, the guy on the head end with me, I said, uh, I said, look at this. I said, do you, can you see that light up there in the sky? And he said, he got to looking around there, and, uh, and he couldn't sit there for a while. And finally, uh, it seemed like what it was doing, it was coming, it was coming out of the north, going south, towards the sun, or... I guess you'd call it, looked like it was going south, and maybe it's more more of an east towards the sun. But uh, he finally did sit, and uh, he said, man, it kind of scared him. He's a colored guy anyway. He said, <laughs> I heard him talk about them, and he said, that, yeah, I was, didn't much, never did really believe it, it was anything, but he said, uh, well, I guess, but he said, I saw it with my own eyes, you know, and he said, well, uh, it's, uh, Started talking, well, they better leave the moon alone, you know, and this and that, you know. Really? Stay down here where we belong. So, so, uh, but it got, oh, closer to the sun, it is. That before it seemed like it got to the sun, it kind of went east. You know, like if it just turned and went, was started direct, uh, directly towards the east. Uh-huh. And, uh, so we never did sit, we never could sit anymore, we kept looking around there, but sun was beginning to come on up or you know, uh-huh. uh, after that. Was you moving all this time? Yeah, I was, we was moving, yeah. And, uh, but the thing looked like it maybe, it was like, uh, say like it go, uh, for a distance, say maybe like 40 or 50 feet, and it get real bright, and then it disappeared, and, and like it was, you know, it was the moving, you know, and then directly it get real bright again. It was just off and on. Uh, and so, the guys, uh, we was happy, I was having engine trouble, and, uh, out of a little place called Upton over there. Okay. So, but when we got over, like I said, around Lamont, well, uh, and I was telling them guys, uh, well, we just about in, uh, getting into the neighborhood of a little place called Cabern up there. And, uh, it's just, it's just, oh, I don't well, know. How do you spell it? I think it's C-A-R-B-O-N, I believe it's something like, I believe that's the way they spell it. And, uh. But anyway, uh, I told him, guys, I said, uh, we seen a, I said, we seen a real bright light up here. He said, you did, you know, and, uh, guys, that was the guys on the rear. But anyway, and we got over, like I said, we was having engine trouble, so we got over around St. Philip, and, uh, and he said, there's a train following us. I said, and, uh, and I said, well, I don't know, I haven't heard him. And so I didn't think no more about it. Well, maybe it was a train coming behind us. And so we got up on the bell now, hill. I don't know. It's a pretty good grade going up in the... It's run, Curlis Road runs across it up there. But anyway, it's a, it's a pretty good uh, pull for a train either going north or coming south. Uh-huh. And like I said, we had an engine down. We had about 6,000 tons. But anyway, I got up on the hill and I hung up. So the guy said, well, there's a train back here. It's at the, it's at, he 
you've been following us for a while, Larry. And, uh, and I said, well, I haven't heard him on the radio. And he said, well, I, these walkie-talkies we got, they're not very good because we had the, we had Burlington engine, which uses, and they have a uh, revolving yellow Mars light on top of it. It's a real, real bright yellow. Uh-huh. And it revolves around up there. And it throws out a real pretty good light there, especially at nighttime. Where at? On top of the engine, right on the tip, right up on the very oh, top. Really? When did they start that? Well, I don't know. They, uh, some of their engines has them and some of them don't. Now, let me, I want to ask you more about this because it seems like these, this type of light is what fascinates these guys. Because uh, we had a police car chase the other day and when they switched off their light, it went away. Now, you see these are round lights and they flash, what color? Uh, yellow, real bright yellow. Like a strobe almost. Yeah, and it, and it goes around. It really whirls around. And you use this all the time? Uh, well, just at certain times? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we use it. It's supposed to be used one of, out on the road, you know, because uh, it really attracts uh, automobiles' attention. You know, they see like this thing uh, going around or something. And it's on the engine? Yeah, it's on top of the, the engine. Okay, now continue on. So, but, and the guys, like I said, we got up on the bell nap, well, uh, the engine I uh, had one of them was down, and so we stopped, and, uh, and he said, well, let them, uh, let that train push us over. I said, well, I haven't heard no train. He said, well, there's one back there, because he's been a following. Real bright. So I said, he's headlight back there. And the board's red, which was, is very unusual, you know. Well, what's this now? This is a signal. He gave us a red signal on the, on our block signal. Oh, really? And that's in, in, in the station or on the train? This this is stationary on the ground at the passing track and on the on the track itself. Uh, but where does the board show up at? On your train? No. Uh, or at the station? Uh, no, it it don't it don't show up. It just uh, in the sand distances. Uh, you know, I mean, it, we can tell what color they are. They either either green or yellow or red. Oh, in other words, this is on the track. Yeah, this is on the track itself. But anyway, uh, the guy said, "Well, so we, and we, the board's red," and so he says, "Well, uh." Call the tire and get the man on. Uh, if there is a train, so I called the man in the tire and I asked him. I said, uh, "Is there a train behind us?" And uh, he said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "Well, you know what I'm talking about. Is you got a train on the lineup that's supposed to come in here." Uh, he said, "No, there ain't no trains coming." And, uh, and I called that guy. I told him, "I, said, I just called the uh, uh, Hal Tire down there. And said, He's the yard master down there." And I said. Uh, he says, they ain't got no train. He says, well, there's a... He says, well, is there a headlight behind us? He, says, I, he said, I can see it. It's real bright. And uh, I <laughs> said, well, the man said there wasn't no, no train coming, so that's all I know. Cause we was going to let him push us over, you know. Cause we, I said we had a was over, way over tonnage and after the engine went down, and we just couldn't make it up. Uh-huh. When was the last you saw of it? Or he saw of it? Well, uh, I, I, I really don't, don't know when the, really the last time he saw it. Uh-huh. How many of you all saw it? Three? Yeah, it was three of us, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, we won't give out any names or anything. There's really no sense in it, really. Yeah. But um, now I'll ask you this. That's a diesel, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, when did you start having train trouble? Well, uh, really, the guy that, that was on there, he told me, you know, uh, he, he's an older head. He's been around here. I went, see, I went up and, like I said, got this train. Uh-huh. He had been out there. Well, 12 hour law is all we can work to. Uh-huh. And uh, and they tied up at, up in the morning. They could make it back to Howe without 12 hour law got them. Yeah. So uh, he says the engine is you know, your rear unit back there is dead. And he says there's no use to go back there and mess with it because he said I've already messed with it. Well, uh, I was. Well, uh, I was probably 35 minutes coming up and into Mount Vernon, Indiana, which is uh, only about a 10 or 15 minute run over there hmm. with a normal train. And uh, so I got out here at Belknap, and after the, he said there wasn't no train, well, we was going to have to double in the howl, and that takes four oh, hour and a half, two hours. So we went to bring part of it in and go back and get it. Uh-huh. So, while we, so the guy said, well, we we'll back down to St. Phelps, and uh, so when we back down there, uh, I told him, I said, I'm going back there and check that engine and uh, see, if, see what it looks like and see what's wrong with it. So I went back there and uh, I just turned the engine on and it kicked right off. And, uh, and I'd worried all the way to trying to get Mount Vernon to Howe, you know, and then I already went up the top of the hill and couldn't get over it and we was back at night. Like I said, back down to St. Philip. So I went back there. 
push the engine and uh, let kick right off. And I didn't have any more trouble. It pulled, pulled over the bell and out real good. And it was still running when I got off in the, at the Howell Roundhouse. Well, now that we hear this... And the guy said, there ain't no way that the engine can... There's nothing to do with it, because he said, I'll already mess with it. The guy's been there for 30 some years, and I've only been there about 14. And, and he's pretty good. He's a real good engineer, but he says, well, there's nothing to do with the engine, because I've already checked it out and start. But anyway, after pull up on Bill, and I went back down the hill there, and uh, went back there, and I think kicked right off, didn't have any trouble with it. Pulled the train on over the hill. Right? Who's going to check the engine out now, I wonder? Well, uh, the guy... This guys, is important, really. Huh? This could be pretty important. <laughs> well, the guy who's going to check it out was uh, would be uh, Frank White, would be one of them. He's an electrician there at Howe. Okay, could you let us know what he finds out? Well, because this could be what affected it. Well, We've had so many reports like this, and I'm really interested in, in following it up. Yeah. And also, let us know of anything uh, that, uh, do I you know of anything that call, might cause this red or block signal to come on by itself? No. What's it mean? There's something heavy on the track, yeah, or is there electronic heavy on the track. There's something heavy on the track, and it's got to be grounded. And the only trouble that... Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say it's got to be heavy on the tracks, and it's got to be grounded. It's got to be well, grounded. What about if there was uh, such as a magnetic field causing the tracks to short out? Would that do it? Well, uh... That'd be a ground. Well, there's this possibility, yeah, and something like that. So that's, this guy said, well, there's a train back there because he's got a red board back there, you know. Uh -huh. And I okay. said, well, the man says there's nothing back there. So, uh, and uh, we did have, we had some trouble, see, at, at Hog Road. I don't know if you know where it's at or not. It's just right into that before you come into the Barker Avenue down here. Uh -huh. Close to Howell there. And uh, I talked to the man this morning. I asked him, if, I said, well, did you fall us out on the truck? He says, no. And he says, if I had him, it, it, it won't, the truck won't, uh, one of them high rails, we call them. Mm -hmm. It was the guy, it's, it's one of them pickup trucks he drive on the rail. Mm -hmm. He probably saw him. But the man says, no, says, if it was, you know, says, there's no way. We could even give you a red board. So when the man says, this morning, he says, well, it's not no head, it's not a truck. He said, it shouldn't have been truck lights because they, he said it was really too bright. And he thought it, and he said, really, it was really brighter than the engine headlight. Uh -huh. And he could see it back there, see? Yeah. Well, this is really something. I really appreciate you calling. Uh, and, uh, so uh, when we started backing up, it seemed like that what it was. He said the board went green. What's like, this mean? Like if the if what it was back there had given us a red signal, well, it started in the other direction, and it cleared up the boards for us. <laughs> and that's what was so amazing. He says that the guy... When you backed up. Yeah, when we started backing up, off the hill up there, we was going back down towards St. Phillips, like I said. And that's before you checked the engine out? Yeah, it was before, and after I got out there and stopped at St. Phillips, I said, well, I'm going back there and check the engine, and the engine was okay, and it started, and the board cleared up, and the man said, it really had him puzzled over the board. So he said, when we was backing up there, it was red, and we started backing up, that was about, that before we got to the board, the thing went green, and he said, I can't figure that board out. My goodness. And he said, that's when I knew it, and then it wasn't a train, and he said, I... I couldn't figure it out. That's what got him puzzled about the board being red. And then when we start back up toward it, well, the board cleared up. Well, I'll be darned. But I don't know where this guy is. I could find out where he had the engine from. I could find out. Yeah, I'd like to, we're going to follow this one up because this could be the best case of the whole two or three days here. But uh, we're, we got another one that involves a uh, cigar-shaped object that emitted a hum the other day. I wanted to check it out, too. But uh, I appreciate... Uh, your trouble, and I'll probably get back with you on it. Well, and, uh, we I won't put you through anything. I don't though. have you know no reason to lie about it. I mean, yeah, I know that. So strange, it's one way thing, you know. Sure. And after we saw the lightning, the guy said, "Well, there's a train behind us." I said, I'm "Having all that trouble, and the hill shows over the hill." And I called a man and asked him if he could show. He said, "Well, there ain't no train back there." Yeah. And he said, "Well, the board." And he said, "Well, the board was red." He, he said, "I'm really puzzled about the signals, the way the signals was operating back there. We had a red." And uh, yellow like a, you know, we got a yellow like a pro signal, like if you come to the stoplight. Well, that's the way ours operates. You get a yellow, then you get your red. Uh -huh. And he said there was a yellow, and there was a red. And he said, I think the train set back there. And like when we started backing up, he said the board, the yellow one went uh, went green, and it started clearing up back through there, like, you know, like with, uh, it was going away from us, too. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. So a yellow, a yellow board means uh, just normal, right? Uh, no, green means normal, and yellow means, uh, we call it approach, or, or be on the lookout because the preferred yeah. to look at the next board, is it should be red. The red board just confirms it, right? Yeah. And uh, when we got a green, uh, the first board we'll ever come to should be a yellow one, and maybe the next one will be your red board. Give you plenty of time to break and uh, get your train under control and stop at the red board. In other words, you see this light ahead of you, uh, and it it's yeah, it's, right. uh, uh -huh. it's normally green. Yeah. And if it's if it's lit up yellow, that means you might have a train approaching you. Uh, a train in something in front of us. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, but this was behind us. See, the guy saw it was behind us. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And he said that's he said that's board. He kept saying. Because actually, I was kidding because he don't had been reading up on it. Though. Yeah, and actually, you you caused a kind of a short when you drove over the track, so I don't see how I could have got through there, but sure did, didn't it? And, uh, yeah, and uh, he said, the board has got me confused because he said we had a red one. I seen the lights back there, and it was a red board. And he says I thought it was. A, and he said I, well, I just swore it was a train, you know. And I thought no. The man said there was no train. He said well, I seen the headlights. Uh, the lights been following us. I said well, the man said there's no train back there, so I don't know. Huh. And he said. Well, uh, and we had red boards. And he said, when we started backing up, the bo the red one went to uh, the yellow one, and the yellow one we had backing up towards it. He said, it cleared up. He said, that's what I can't figure out. Huh. Like somebody was going away from it, they knew it was backing up towards it. Huh. Well, I'll be darned. Well, I appreciate talking to you, but I will get back with you. Well, and I can, I can let you know uh, where the guy had the, where the engine trouble started at. But okay. He, the, the man has been there for 30-some years, and he says, there's no, there's nothing you can do to uh, the engine.